So uh, welcome to this uh, uh, today's video conference and uh, I start the conference uh, taking leave from the uh, assurance made by uh, by Honorable HRM in the parliament in the last budget session uh, while discussing on technology enabled learning and teaching Honorable Prime uh, HRM made an assurance on the floor of house that within next six months Ministry of HRD will launch its own platform. Primarily, this platform will be will be a platform for all the centrally funded institutions. And in year uh, uh, in in next one to one and a half year, 50 centrally funded institutions will be offering the online courses uh, through the platform. And year one, 14 centrally funded institutions will be offering the online courses. As uh, uh, all of you are aware that the, the assurances made in parliament, uh, the process is that assurances get recorded and the parliament then follows with the ministry and every month from the ministry side we are supposed to submit a report uh, that what is our action plan. Uh, Honorable HRM uh, said on the floor of house that in the next six months uh, 14 centrally funded institutions will be offering uh, uh, the, uh, their online courses. The way it happens, uh, those who are new to the parliament system, just for getting everybody on board. So the parliament uh, section of, 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 the, of the Lok Sabha, they keep interacting with us, they keep asking us every one month the progress report. And after six months, uh, uh, then they start asking the ministry that the assurance was given on the floor of house that it is done in six should be done in six months. Please tell us, uh, let us know why it has not been completed. What were the reasons? What are the revised schedules and things like that? So uh, this is the background and which uh, from the ministry side we are focusing on 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 launching uh, 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 India MOOCs platform. There are a series of meetings at the ministry levels had happened. Uh, Secretary sir himself has taken a meeting three four times. Uh, uh, the Honorable uh, uh, HRM will have a meeting, uh, uh, internal meeting with us next uh, Monday to understand our preparedness. Uh, we have selected uh, 15 to eight, uh, 14 institutions and uh, uh, because we really want it, because it's a, it's a phase one, we really uh, want to bring the best out of our 150 to the to the citizens and the students of our country. And out of, uh, of out of the 14 best which we have identified in our area, uh, your institution is one of them. Uh, in our internal review meeting in the ministry, uh, and the the minister is very clear in her mind that. The day it is launched, nobody should say that this platform is only for providing online courses for engineering education. Uh, whatever is the ratio of uh, centrally funded institutions uh, in ministry, which, which means um, IIT, ICERs, IIMs, central universities, skill universities, teachers training, uh, 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 in, uh, in, uh, institutes in the same ratio uh, the online courses should be offered a triple IT uh, so keeping that in mind we are zeroing in on 14 institutions 22 courses in phase 1 uh, we are also looking at uh, uh, as I said earlier the variety in the engineering education pure science applied science social sector there is one very interesting online courses or uh, course which IIT Kanpur uh, will be offering, uh, which is MOOCs on MOOCs, uh, which we will be popularizing among all our faculty members uh, of, of, of centrally funded institutions and even from the state universities and private universities. It goes without saying, it's a technology enabled uh, learning and teaching early days uh, because we don't have. Uh, the revenue model in place, all activities will be funded, 100% funded by ministry. 
everything, all expenses, whether it's expense related to uh, creation of infrastructure, expenses related to creation of, of courses, expenses related to hiring TAs, expenses related to providing honorarium to the uh, to the to the concerned professor, uh, everything will be provided by 100% funding will be provided by by ministry. Uh, we also want uh, that every uh, every centrally funded institutions of Ministry of HRD should should come up with their signature course, whatever they think is their their. I'm sure all courses are important, but the one which they think is is the signature course. Uh, we should come up. The 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 timeline the 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 date which is fixed for launching of our platform is 25th September, being the birth anniversary of uh, of Pandit Deen Dayal Upadhyay. So it has been decided to launch this platform. Pandit Deen Dayal. Uh, uh, the idea was that philosophy of the Pandit Deen Dayal about education is that it was that we should reach out to the to the student in the farthest corner of, of, of the country, in the most remote village of the country. Taking inspiration from that, uh, the date has been finalized as 25th September. Uh, yes, we know we cannot create a course by 25th September, but at least on 25th September, when we'll have a launch, we want the emblems of uh, every uh, all, this, all the 14 centrally funded institutions on that platform. We, we should have name of, of of the of the course which the centrally funded institution will be offering, and tentatively day, and that day has to be. Uh, uh, minister made a, a assurance on the floor of house in the second week of August, so it should be it should be before February or March. It should be the day of launch. It should be before that. So with this background, uh, I'll request uh, Patak Sab to uh, to tell us in detail about about the different preparations, different features of our our platform. Thank you, Pravin Prakash ji. Uh, I have loaded uh, some PowerPoint slides, uh, which I will use for uh, explaining the modus operandi that we have planned. Is primarily for the massive Indian deployment of massive open online courses. As Pravin Prakash ji said, we plan to deploy MOOCs on a very large scale. Luckily, several professors of many institutions in India have already experimented successfully with MOOCs. Many continue such serious experimentation. So, for example, IIT Madras and IIT Kanpur, I know, where they already have ready-made courses. I also know several central universities have created a large amount of open courseware and digital assets which can probably be leveraged very quickly. The platform that we have been building is based on open EDX. EDX is an organization with which we have an MOU and we have been offering global courses on EDX. But they also have their platform software open source which we have used to create an India specific version. We expect the launch of this uh, proposed platform uh, to happen on 25th September, as Pravin Prakash ji already mentioned. So the context of our platform development project is as follows. We actually made a request, uh, a proposal, funding proposal to the ministry, and ministry approved this development, which will actually take place over the next three years. And it involves development, maintenance, and enhancement of functionality. It also involves design of few courses and actual MOOC mode offering. More importantly, it involves setting up of a special purpose vehicle in the form of a not-for-profit company, which uh, will actually operate these things across the country. Uh, so that the operational handling, the revenue handling, etc., etc., will be handled by SPV, and the entire activity becomes self-sustained over the subsequent years. However, after this project was approved, the vision of scale has expanded and time frames have shrunk. We have actually already adopted this open EDX platform. This is a typical view that you go to the site. In IIT Bombay, we are actually using the MOOC 
MOOC operation in a blended mode. So our students as we speak are actually currently using this in a semi MOOCs mode. This is currently how the site will uh, looks like. However, it will change to the name uh, chosen by the ministry called Swayam in a short while. So this site has uh, some course information, information about other institutions and so on. This is the typical uh, uh, screen that a student would see. So for example, in IIT Bombay, the course CS101 which is being taught, a student will look at say quizzes uh, or the uh, weekly schedule from uh, 18 to 22nd of August. This is a screenshot of what has already happened in the course. The point being made is that MOOC scores are actually seen by the students individually and they are always divided into weekly schedules. During the week at any point in time the learner can finish the work ass assigned to uh, him or her during that week. I mentioned about the expanded ministry vision. Actually I was also taken aback by the large scale as Praveen Prakash ji said 10 to 15 institutions are to join by the launch date and all of you who are joining this presentation and plus few who joined on the first have thankfully come forward uh, to join this launch. We expect 15 more to be identified by 31st December. We expect 25 more to be identified before the end of uh, 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 June next year. A total of 50 academic entities thus will join some kind of a consortium and 50 more will join by the end of year 2 of this project. The number of books to be announced are 15 immediately, another 35 by end December, another 50 by June 2015, then another 50 by June 2016 and another 50 by December 2016. This is a massive operation and no single entity whether it is EDX or Coursera or anyone has taken up this kind of challenge uh, to do it in such a short while. I think we are privileged to try and do this for India. First, the set of activities that need to be conducted to build and operate a course. Initially, we must identify the university and institute. We will be calling every such academic entity as a node in our consortium business. So once the node is identified, each node identifies courses and the corresponding teachers who will be designing these courses and offering those courses. Once that is approved internally at the nodal level, then these teachers will start preparing the course design, will completely create the course. Once the course design is approved and reviewed, it will be loaded onto the, uh, onto the website and then course would be offered based on the timetable. Please note that when the course is announced, the start date and end date of the course offering is required to be announced. The assessment is completely online. It is done usually through weekly quizzes and through a mid-semester or end-semester examination. At the end of any course offering, there is important feedback and there is a scope for course improvement. This will be taken care of by the concerned faculty and the new version of the course would be then designed and offered. Last but not the least, as per the ministry directive, the, as per the mission directive, all content which are created in this course, uh, in every course will be open source. This open sourcing of course content requires that all teachers who design this course take extreme care in ensuring that there is absolutely no protected IPR that is used or if such is used, it is used with appropriate permissions for uh, release under creative commons. We will seek from each of our esteemed colleagues detailed information about each node. We have prepared a booklet which will be sent by email to all participants in this uh, video conference as well as other colleagues who joined in the 1st of uh, uh, September. We seek the name of the institution, the seal, logo and brand which will be a graphic image, introductory text header graphic which means there should be a picture with some specifications here. Please understand that all these specifications are to maintain the uniformity so that when there are 100 universities or nodes, they all appear on the web in a similar fashion to everyone.
most important we will require a coordinator for the MOOCs program from the university. This person should be single handedly responsible for all MOOCs related activity in the university or the institution. So we would like his or her name, designation, email ID, landline and mobile. Then for every course that your university or institution proposes to offer, we will seek information about the course ID, any uh, number that you give to the course in your own university. Of course, the name of the institution will have to be repeated here because this is a separate information about the course. Course title, maximum 60 characters. These two are the most important points. You will have to estimate when your course will be completely ready for offering. So you will have to do design, development work, etc. Once you estimate, then you announce the course on 25th of uh, September on the launch date. That course will have a specific start date. As Praveen Prakash ji said, it could be October, November, December, January, but not beyond that. The course will have a duration of number of weeks and therefore it will have an end date. We will require the teachers to estimate the time that every learner must commit per week to be spent on this course. It is typically of the order of 5 to 8 hours per week, which is roughly what a student spends in a course in the regular framework. If the course has any prerequisite and experience, it should be stated. There should be a brief course description and there should be a full course description, but there are limits on the number of words and characters we request all of you to adhere to these. Last but not the least, we need the faculty members names. There could be a team of faculty members. We require that every course should have a lead faculty member who is responsible for the entire course offering. But a course can be designed and offered by a team of people in which case we will require names of all the professors, their titles, their faculty photographs, typically passport size photographs, brief biography educational biography or professional biography. Then for that course, if there is frequently asked questions, these could be prepared by each university based on the past experience of offering that course in your own university where the teachers who have been offering it would have come across a large number of questions that the students ask, not about the subject, but about the course, about the way the course is offered, about the way the evaluation is done, about the way the grading is done. Any such frequently asked questions uh, could be uh, prepared and answered along with the preliminary information. It is useful to create a separate email address for every course. We did not do that and I, as a consequence I personally suffered getting about 1000 emails every day when the MOOCs course started. So this is one example cs-101 at iitb.ac.in and of course the concerned teachers and the TAs who offer that course would have access to this kind of email. We expect every institution to make a small introductory video typically of 2 to 3 minutes duration. Uh, we will explain uh, this kind of video later but this is something which is available from day one and many learners across the world typically take a decision on whether to join the course or not based on not only the course description but also on the introductory video which is prepared by the institution. There could be a still picture from the video which will be used to highlight the video play key. There could be a lead graphic image for the course. If there are any additional resources, for example, any open courseware or any third party links, the list of books, etc., etc., all additional resources are expected to be listed while announcing the course. Of course, the teachers have the freedom to add more resources later when the course is offered. Finally, there is a subject category tagging. We have created certain tags like biology, life sciences, arts, commerce, accounts, whatever, whatever. Uh, to the best of our knowledge, we have created these categories. It is obviously possible that there could be courses which do not fit into any category, in which case we request the concerned university to suggest a category name we will make every endeavor to add that category right now before the launch. The institute contact information for course content and review process. This is extremely important. This is not the contact information of the person who is the in charge of the entire MOOCs program, nor this is the contact information about the lead faculty member. 
although it could be the lead faculty member. This is a person typically in IIT system is a senior TA or PhD student or something who is going to be associated full time with the offering of the course who can actually interact with the central uh, 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 server here and the people here who are managing the program in case there are any questions on the course content and the review process etc. I will briefly describe the activities at each node. First and foremost, as Praveen Prakash ji made it very clear, the funding is proposed to be provided by NME ICT through project mode. We have been asked to make a large project proposal which is under active consideration of the standing committee of the, uh, of the mission and uh, the ministry will appropriately decide how the funding is to be provided. We expect infrastructure at each node to be created which will involve creation of a MOOC course creation lab. We also expect a mini cloud to be set up. It is a server platform which the university can use to offer any one of the courses which are offered in the main platform to be locally modified and offered to their own local students. This will also permit local faculty members to experiment with versions of the course locally before they commit anything on the main cloud. We expect up to 20 staff members to be hired and trained over a period of next two to three years in order to permit these activities to be properly supported. There would be of course some consumable budget and travel budget as a standard in any project mode operation. We have constructed a small uh, lab here for uh, studio editing and so on. This is our studio at one corner of which is our editing framework. These are video editors, these are video mixers, this is the uh, audio mixer, these are video recorders here, a small monitors for the uh, person who sits and assists in the recording to handle these things. So I will, in order to save time, I will skip the images which essentially describe a small uh, studio that we have created. I must hasten to add that some of our esteemed colleagues have brilliant facilities to create video recording lectures. I have personally seen the excellent studios that IGNU has for example and I am uh, NITTR also has excellent facilities. I am sure many of you have such facilities but I would still request you to consider setting up of a small studio and an associated lab to concentrate only on creation uh, and editing of MOOCs courses. Typical activities in creating a course involves preparation of video clips. I would like to reiterate that these are not one hour lecture videos but these are typically 8 minutes to 10 minutes, 12 minute kind of clips. In any weekly schedule of a course there would be a clip followed by an activity list, followed by an online quiz, followed by some practice problems, followed by another video clip and so on and that is how the entire concept covered in a week is broken and packaged into different concepts. We have found this part to be most difficult part to design pedagogically. Once that is done, you prepare the video clips, prepare the transcripts, synchronize the transcripts with the audio so that subtitles appear on all the uh, videos that you have uploaded. We have to prepare a weekly sequence as I mentioned, quizzes and examination schedules have to be defined. Uh, these could be per week as I said. All online quizzes, tests, practice problems have to be created. All handouts and other course material has to be created. All of this has to be part of the course design and development. Last but not the least, every bit of material need to be reviewed and corrections must be applied. Uh, I will tell you that ordinarily when we conduct a course and suppose there is a mistake in either a quiz question or in any handout, we can simply announce to the class that this is a mistake. But when 50,000, 60,000, 1 lakh students participate, we have had experience that we release the course material of a certain week and within 5 minutes at least 10 to 15 people start shouting back on the discussion forum pointing out even small mistakes of brackets and full stops and so on. So extensive beta testing has to be done for every course material that is created before it is offered. We also expect many of our courses particularly the foundation level courses to be translated into multiple Indian languages. Uh, we have suggested a significant budget for doing this translation. In this video transcript is actually uh, uh, taken, uh, the transcript which is the audio transcript is then back dubbed into the video using 
spoken tutorial methodology which has been perfected through a another national mission project uh, which is championed by my colleague Professor Kannan Mautgalya. The translation of other material also needs to be done through normal process such as text, problems and solutions and so on. And all of this needs to be reverse integrated with MOOC. On the platform, we have kept a provision for language selection. So the moment a language is selected, the learner will be guided through that material, the video subtitles will appear, appear in that language, etc., etc. We expect efforts to be made eventually to translate all courses in all Indian languages, but we do expect majority of courses may be translated in much fewer languages to begin with. We have recommended an appropriate budget for this activity. When the course has to be offered, the course will start on the date that we have announced during the announcement time. So for example, suppose a course is announced on 25th of September to begin from 15th of November. Then before 15th of November, all possible learners will register for that course. There could be a preliminary course survey that the teachers might want to conduct typically one week before the course starts. Once the course starts, there has to be daily monitoring of discussion forum. Answers must be given as early as possible. Please note that this is the only equivalent to a classroom discussion that we have. In a classroom, a student asks me a question and I respond immediately. Online also, a student would actually psychologically expect that kind of response. Within one day, if the response does not come, the student gets discouraged. Additional material might have to be added during the course. For example, more practice problems, alternate quizzes, any additional explanation sessions which the teacher might record and insert while the course is operational. Final grading and certification will have to be done. Currently, we are considering only the audit certificate, which means anybody who attends all the courses, all the weeks and so on, or honor code, which is based on the exams and online quizzes that the learner gives. But guarantees or at least gives on his or her honor that he or she has not cheated. Subsequently, as many of you would know, there are efforts to ensure that UGC will permit and the universities will adopt the actual grades to be accepted as part of the university degree curriculum. But for that, the examinations will have to be proctored and there is a lot of activity that is going on, but that is a policy matter. As of now, this is what we will be offering. In a nutshell, while offering a course, the faculty team and the teaching assistants have a major role to play. It is almost a full-time job and this is something that all academic leaders should take cognizance of in permitting uh, the, the course team to actually work full-time by reducing their load elsewhere. Obviously, many of us who have never prepared a course on MOOC will require some training. We are, ourselves have undergone this training. We are creating a lot of training material and what we call the training MOOCs. That is massive open online courses for training. We additionally will conduct specific training workshops. One workshop is immediately planned. I shall describe that in a short while. There will have to be refresher training for people who have already been trained. But I would like all of you to appreciate that since all of us have been teachers of very long standing, we might believe that this is just a minor variation in how we teach normally. Unfortunately, it is not. It is a major different thing and all of us need to spend considerable amount of time in, in learning this technique. We propose to have a large setup at IIT Bombay. We will be establishing a center of excellence in MOOCs related R&D and online education. We will be collaborating with all of you as partners of the consortium, more specifically with few of the universities which have excellent track record in handling MOOCs related activities and a pedagogy for technology enabled learning. Now I come to my concluding side which is the action agenda. As Praveen Prakashji said, the site will be launched on 25th. On 25th, all the university partners who are assembled here and who will be participating must have their presence on the site. We can guarantee such presence only if all required information is available to us by 15th of September. To begin with, I would request all senior colleagues to send the name and email ID of the program manager. 
that is the person who will be single point responsible for all MOOCs related activities in that university or institution. It could be either a faculty member or a senior admin person. We call them program manager, but that term program manager or PM uh, actually coincides with our uh, esteemed term of prime minister. So we have decided to rename it as program coordinator, which is a more common nomenclature used in India. A short training workshop is arranged at IIT Bombay. Kindly note these dates, September 11th, 12th and 13th. We expect participants to arrive by 10th evening or 10th night and plan to depart on 14th morning. This three day session is meant for the program manager or program coordinator plus the lead faculty of each course. So if your university is offering one course, the lead faculty of that course. If you are offering two courses, then two faculty members. Later on, we will also arrange a similar training program for the technical staff of each university. Kindly note that as Praveen Prakash ji said, the entire workshop including uh, uh, reimbursement of travel uh, expenses etc. will be handled by IIT Bombay through this project. So there is no financial liability. Of course, important time of these people will have to be invested in doing this. In any case, the people that we are talking about are people whom the university will be identifying to work full time on this activity and therefore that is all in order. The objective here is not that teachers will immediately become experts and start designing the course, but the objective is that each teacher and each program coordinator will go back and estimate how much time is required for creating a course at their end. Now this decision will be different in different universities because many of you would have portions of the material already ready for the course. So what you will have to do is you will have to go back and estimate how long it will take to repurpose that uh, portion, how long it will take to redesign something, whether you would like to start from scratch. Our experience is typically it takes three months uh, to completely design a course with at least some basic facilities available. You will have to take cognizance of your existing infrastructure and the readiness of other things to decide this. Now this, all of this can be factored in deciding start end dates. Uh, we will have to act fast after the colleagues go back to their respective universities on 14th because by 15th we need to know the final announcement dates for start date and end date for every course that you offer. Once that is done, on 25th we will be able to launch all of that. Our infrastructure is getting ready to uh, currently bear the, bear the entire site uh, operations. Uh, what I did not mention is that eventually this entire site when the operations become very large scale will shift to the national mission cloud that is being set up in Delhi or we might even hire some other cloud which operates from the Indian soil. We do not want to take our contents and our students data outside India for these operations. Uh, well, that's all I had to say. I am delighted, in fact, to have, uh, uh, you know, while I have not interacted with some of the colleagues here, but I know many and I have had a pleasure of working with them. I look forward to this opportunity. Both me and my team here are eagerly looking forward to this opportunity to make a difference to the entire national education system. And all of you are going to be remembered as pioneers in this. Thank you very much. Over to you. Reactions from uh, from different uh, universities. We'll start with Delhi University. All right, so please identify your coordinator names and uh, please send it to uh, uh, send it to Professor Fatak. And uh, must have noted down that 11, 12, 13, there is a workshop in Delhi. Uh, please send those uh, 
uh, coordinators. Uh, please uh, also inform the uh, uh, VC sahab that uh, we have many of us uh, have seen uh, his open course where his videos on Delhi University website. One of the one of the most uh, impressive webs, uh, open course fair in in India. So please convey to him if it's possible for him to to offer a course because uh, definitely it will attract because we want that the first 15 or 20 courses and we will be spending lot of money in actually publicizing this Indian platform. Uh, one estimate says that. Uh, the amount of money actually will be spending will be almost two to three times more than the uh, than what actually goes into creating the platform. Therefore, yeah, we really want uh, the first 20 courses to be the really in in their field the best courses of the country. Uh, yeah, as, as as somebody said in the meeting with secretary sir was uh, that. Uh, uh, these courses, uh, these 20 courses, uh, uh, will decide the future of open online uh, online courses in India. So please convey our request that if uh, we can have VC Saab's course, uh, I'll just. Uh, meanwhile, I would like to mention uh, that the workshop is planned in IIT Bombay and not in Delhi. Pravin Prakash ji, I think mentioned Delhi. <laughs> We can continue our discussion. Over to you, Delhi. Okay, sir. I will I'll convey this uh, request to Professor Dinesh Singh. He will definitely, and I hope that he will agree to, to this course uh, and will be part of this. And uh, we will uh, uh, try to be there in uh, IIT Bombay. And we have a uh, larger view of it and we get uh, more feedback and how to proceed on this. Looking forward to seeing you there. Uh, can we have other colleagues to respond one by one in the meanwhile? Uh, may I request somebody in Delhi uh, to organize shifting of the control uh, to other colleagues one by one in the other universities? Hello, Professor, I am RK Vyas. I am from the Institute of Life and Learning. Professor Jackson and myself, we will be representing Delhi University as this moves course. And as Dr. Mishra already briefed you that we will be taking two courses in economics and commerce and we have a good background of developing e-contents and we have got our own uh, uh, VIA site, virtual learning environment site available where we have got audio, videos and e-contents available and we are also part of the LMB ICT program of MHRD no? which is being conveyed. Hope the directions which we are getting and this is the guidance, we will be able to fulfill the needs which is being made available through Delhi University. Thank you. Thank you. Now, can we go to IGNU? So, we will, uh, IGNU, I think there are some uh, issues and uh, link. We will go to ISAR Pune. Yeah, the ISAR Pune. So, uh, we would like to know one or two things because we are quite new to this as of now. So, to what audience we are targeting this? Is it generally covering undergraduate level or is it graduate level? At what level are we expected to give this course? Let me let me answer this. The expectation is that the course that we choose is should be one which is likely to benefit the largest number of people. So while all courses are important, my own recommendation would be that one of the undergraduate courses which is required uh, to be uh, studied by a very large number of students across the country and the course chosen should be such that the syllabus that is offered in ISER should be similar to at least one course that the students are required to do in their normal university because that is how we believe they will benefit most. So you can choose any one of your star courses which might come close to fulfilling such an expectation that they satisfy the needs of large number of people. It is in this context that an undergraduate course could be better suited. Thank you. Over to you. Yeah, we are done. Uh, we will get back after, you know, after talking to the director and our other faculty.
Ignu. Hello, sir. Uh, I'm Dr. Bose here from Ignu. Our honorable uh -huh. VC is away. So, you know, uh -huh. that we will definitely, you know, the take this issue and also, you know, the send the coordinator's name and which course you would like to offer. So, we will put up or do this to our honorable VC and we'll come back to you in a short while. Thank you. We'll go to uh, I'm, uh, Calcutta. I am Calcutta. Yeah, uh, this is uh, Ashok Banerjee. Uh, Andy, sir. So yes, please go ahead. We would like to, yeah, we would like to know that, you know, we have recently submitted a proposal. So there we mentioned two courses. So is it a part of mm -hmm. that or it's separate? So we were wondering. Nay. So that day also it was discussed now. So we, uh, we will get it on this platform and uh, this uh, if you want to keep the same course on this platform and if if that if if we eventually decide to run on this platform it's okay if you eventually want to dis to experiment with another platform that also was okay with us but the idea is to begin with on 25th when as I said that there has to be the whole idea of the ministry is and particularly it is flowing out of the thought process of minister said that my uh, that MHRD uh, uh, MHRD MOOCs platform which uh, we are going to dedicate to the nation on 25th should not look too much biased towards engineering education yeah and uh, other centrally funded institutions also should contribute so that these these will run parallelly uh, should not be an issue I and mean, anyway the tech other things I will request Patek sir to supplement. Yeah, because you know the, we find there is a training program uh, in, mm -hmm. in from 11th to 13th September and the lead mm -hmm. faculty has to attend that program. So now we have to identify, you know, because we didn't know these dates because our term is going yeah. on. So you have to identify the faculty and then get back. Who is available? Uh, please do, uh, so please, uh, uh, please uh, go ahead and do that. Definitely would like to have the presence of IAM Calcutta on their platform on 25th yeah, September. Okay. Okay, sir. I'll get back. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. We'll go to Calcutta, Vishwabharti. Uh, good afternoon. Hello. Uh, Professor Sushant Dutta Gupta is out of his station. He had a mm -hmm. uh, pre assigned meeting, so he could not be available. Mm -hmm. uh, myself, Dr. S. N. Ojha, uh, head of Computer Center. Mm -hmm. Uh, so, we shall uh, like to contribute to this MOOC platform in a big way and we will be especially interested in uh, science and humanity based courses mm -hmm. and we would also like to attend the training program at IIT Bombay though the time mm -hmm. is very short uh, mm -hmm. once the vice chancellor is back in campus we shall discuss and decide uh, how to coordinate it and we shall let you know so please, accordingly. Yes, yes. So please convey this to uh, the uh, Vice Chancellor and if there is any confusion uh, uh, then uh, please tell me then I will also speak to him. He can also speak to me for any further clarification. So because these are the names which we have uh, we have already finalized we want these uh, centrally funded institutions to be part of us. Now we will go to uh, definitely, sir. Uh, only two points. Yeah. Two points I would uh, like. Ah, uh, please. Ah, uh, please go ahead. Ah, uh, yeah. Uh, two points I would like to highlight before you. Uh, number mm -hmm. one, uh, we are very poor in NCAN bandwidth. The uh, bandwidth you might be experiencing that uh, audio and video both are uh, with lot of jitters. And second is the infrastructure required for uh, this uh, studio for recording the lectures, etc. Uh, that is not available in the campus, so we need to set it up. As, as you as you saw in the as you must have observed in the Professor Fartex presentation, we have kept a funding for the creation of uh, a cloud, the Moose Cloud, and the and the and the related infrastructure for every node. So definitely under the project, 
uh, the funding will may be made available to Vishwa Bharati to set up that uh, studio. Nitar uh, Chandigarh. Good afternoon, sir. Uh, Professor M P Punia from Nitar Chandigarh. Mm. Uh, really, sir, it's, it's a very good initiative, and because we are uh, the institute uh, which are meant for imparting training to technical teachers, so certainly the courses which we'll be proposing will be related to teacher training. In fact, so one already we have, we have planned and already curriculum everything is ready. That is related to ICT tools for technology enabled learning, and I think in time to come, in within one one month time, two months time, it will be ready. Everything video, everything for every subject. Five subjects we are proposing into that one. another one maybe second one maybe this some teachers eligibility test uh, testing of the, the capabilities of the um, persons who are joining this teaching profession no so at least some four five subjects related to pedagogy say instruction planning or instructional delivery or evaluation part or communication skill so four five modules can be and and uh, students who are pursuing their mtech during that time uh, itself they can do these courses and uh, i think and eligibility can be decided on the basis of the course which he, have, he has done during that mtech program and, or even after that when he can clear those courses and then he should be eligible for this teaching profession so these two courses we can propose one more or less it is ready and second one if it is being being um, said yes then we can plan for second one also and on on this training as far as training part is concerned or already for this first course that is icp tools our team is there one one nodal person will be sending there and another one for this one also from education department another teacher may join for this one so two teachers from our institute will be participating uh, i think i think that you your that your uh, i think pare sahab also was there in the meeting you are your institute is a pick of uh, secretaries he has selected specifically nitar chandigarh now i think what is the going in the mind of uh, so first you understand you are sharing a platform which are only the 14 institutions in india iit bombay iit madras iit guwahati university of delhi i sir pune i am calcutta and then nitter so it's it's a big opportunity for nitter to so you have to take it uh, i mean you have to really uh, put uh, give your total your your total personal attention is required in this a b what was going on in secretary's mind when he suggested was can you do something on skill side one perhaps you are saying for technical teachers uh, training uh, some uh, some you can you can you can prepare something on technical teacher side uh, in which i will suggest i think that one course which was very popular when talk to teacher program itself started uh, i think there was a one signature course uh, i don't remember the name of the course it was about how to do your thesis or do some research or something like that research methodology i think that's one course uh, which was one of the signature course uh, during talks to teacher talk to teacher program look at it look at that course because primarily if you are catering to the polytechnic uh, uh, lecturers and the and and the and the and the, and the, and the lecturers in the, in the engineering colleges and even in the in the other side i think that will be the signature course large number of uh, people will be looking at this that's the one course you should pick it up and the second is think of something about in in scaling side so for that sir you 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 uh, given opportunity to us to write a uh, proposal for this skill university online skill university already that proposal mm -hmm. is ready and some of the courses we have planned into that one uh, one or two courses can be taken on 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 that part also sir uh, so i think do that pick up one that 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 project will go on its own but for this project pick up these two courses research methodology and uh, one related to skill another one this ict also sir that already it is read one skill we can take and another one research methodology we can take skill both both skill for neat hard skills hard skills ki baat hai may i suggest so one can be on skills another one for teacher sir ha ah, please sir uh, may i suggest that uh, neater uh, uh, should pick up instead of research methodology they should pick up the courses in which they have extraordinary expertise so pravin prakash ji i would suggest uh, that what uh, professor punia was saying that one course on the skill side and another course on the ict tool for education so they could fashion a course 
which will be meaningful for large number of students across the country to understand how ICT is to be properly used for learning. Maybe we could together fashion such a course based on their expertise. This is my suggestion. And sir, then I take that uh, discussion further. From the IIT Bombay, is it possible to, because that day we can say on 25th that, look, these are the courses we are doing for the students. But at the same time, we can also say there are few courses uh, which are meant for the teachers. Think of any institute which can offer uh, this uh, research methodology. I, I, yes, you are right. We had offered that course and you are absolutely right. It became the most popular course. In fact, that was the course which for the first time we addressed 10,000 teachers. I will immediately get in touch with Professor Karmalkar of uh, IIT Madras, who was the lead faculty. Three or four faculty members from IIT Bombay who participated. And yes, it should certainly be possible. We will announce the course. However, the start date that for that course will be slightly delayed. Uh, there is another course on uh, what we call uh, uh, educational technology, which is also meant for teachers. Uh, so I will discuss this with the colleague. And we will be certainly adding one more course, at least to be announced on that day. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Yes, IIT Guwahati. Yeah, uh, I am Professor S. V. Rao from Computer Department. Uh, yes, sir. We, uh, good afternoon. And we uh, noted down the details about uh, this uh, mock uh, launch and this workshop. And we will discuss with our director, Professor Gautam Biswas, and we'll get back to you. That what we can. It's do. just uh, yes, sir. Just please also tell the director. I'll also. Uh, I mean, I will talk to him. But you please also tell him that the list which when we prepared IIT Guwahati was not uh, part of it. IIT Guwahati name has been included personally by minister. So uh, because uh, she was very particular that I want a institute from northeast. Uh, to be part of it and she said I want to include IIT Guwahati. So it's her pick, uh, the, 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 the IIT Guwahati has been, uh, has been selected by, by, by minister herself. Uh, so definitely uh, we are looking for a very strong contribution from IIT Guwahati and uh, request will be that definitely uh, uh, faculty member and the coordinator from the IIT Guwahati should attend the IIT Bombay's uh, workshop. Okay, sir. We'll uh, discuss and inform the our director, and we'll let you know. Yes. Now we will go to uh, BHU. Yes. Hmm? I am director. IIT BHU is also holding additional charge of vice chancellor of BHU. Yes, uh, sir. We will be naming the our coordinator soon in a couple of days, and sir. in this case, we have an advantage that. IIT BHU got involved with, with the program last semester which was being conducted for all the IITs uh, which was content was sourced from IITs and it was reaching out to 100 colleges. So we have that experience with us, we will take advantage of that and we will be sending from BHU our coordinator for this workshop in Bombay. Uh, we would of course like to know on the 25th September when you are launching the platform uh, you also, uh, Professor Pathak. We have lost all the videos except the Delhi video. Yeah. Were you able to hear me? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. We can hear you, sir. Okay. Uh, so, as I was saying, we will send you the name of our coordinator in the next couple sir. of days and take a little sir. more time to decide what will be our signature courses. And they sir. would be from the area of science plus maybe humanities, law, etc. that we will work out. Yes. You were asking something, sir? Yes. So on 25th, when the platform gets launched, sir. Uh, you, it was mentioned that 15 courses are will also be started. Uh, we would like to know uh, no which sir. are those 15 courses. Huh. No, sir. So courses will not be started as you are saying the two courses from BHU will be there. So yes. only on that day that or that day that start date of the course will be announced. Announced. 
All right, all right, understood. So will be there will be, a, be a, a, on when we launch that uh, platform, then emblem of the BHU will come, and then it will suggest that B and BHU will be offering these two courses, and the course will start in November, and this course will start in December. Sure, I understood. Yes. So that way it will be there, sir. And sir, we are trying yeah, to launched. bring. Uh, we are uh, we are planning to invite the Prime Minister, Honorable Prime Minister, for this program. Uh, so definitely, all eyes will be on BHU uh, when he will be launching the platforms. A any other university? I think uh, we interacted with all of them. Uh, Patek sir, can I go back to him? I, I think we interacted with everybody. Uh, I yeah. forgot to mention uh, one thing. Uh, Professor Parshuraman from TESS is also going to be one of the participants. Uh, fortunately, a colleague of his who has joined him recently and who was my colleague till recently, uh, uh, the prospective faculty member Sami Sastrabuddha is here directly sitting with me. So I will get the necessary details about the coordinator and other courses from Professor Parshuraman directly. I would just like to, in conclusion, I would like to mention this uh, to all esteemed colleagues. Please, I mean, I probably used the wrong word. The three-day program that we are conducting, we are by no means a training workshop. It should be regarded as an orientation workshop. And the main objective of the orientation workshop is for the concerned program coordinator and the teachers to actually estimate how long they will take to set up the infrastructure or to create a course, etc., etc. And as Praveen Prakash ji rightly said, on 25th, all of us should be in a position to see our university names on the website, the course names on the website with the indicated time of launch, uh, start of the course and end of the course. That is the objective. Uh, the second thing I would like to mention is that uh, I noticed that three of our colleagues had to come back with an answer that they will get back to, uh, I think mostly it was vice chancellor, and then they will come back to us. That is only proper and in order. But once the MOOC activity starts, the MOOC coordinator that you appoint must be empowered to take decisions and go ahead because we are working at very short time frames, as uh, everybody pointed out. And uh, that is the way the whole program will be driven, in fact, from now onwards for the next six months and one year. It is absolutely mandatory that the course coordinator or the project uh, program coordinator that you appoint at each place, as also the teacher that you appoint as the lead faculty for a course, should be empowered to take decisions and take action. There will be no time for any further discussion and back end activities. As Praveen Prakash ji said, funding is being provided uh, by the, uh, by the uh, ministry. And uh, of course, we do expect universities to use all their enabling clauses to permit this project to operate in a mission mode. That's all I would like to say. I look forward to receiving the names of colleagues who will be coordinators and possible names of courses. And of course, I look forward to welcoming uh, uh, colleagues from all the universities on 10th night or 11th morning. Thank you so much. Over. Thank you very much. With this, uh, I thank everybody for. Hello. Uh, yeah, please go ahead. Hello. You wanted to ask something? Can we have the transcript of this lecture in our emails? Because we lost a lot of words and views. I think the presentation copy, sir. He is asking for a presentation copy. If that can be mailed to everybody. Uh, I will do one better. Uh, I will have the copy of the presentation. It's about uh, 3 MB uh, long. So what I'll do is I'll try to reduce it by removing the photographs and make it smaller. Uh, or they can download it. Uh, we'll put it on a link. More importantly, I'll request my team to quickly separate out the audio recording and we'll create an audio file which we can send separately as an email attachment so people can at least listen to the voice uh, along with the slides they can see. I will do that within a day. By tomorrow, this will be shipped to everybody. Thank you. Okay. With this, we close the today's video conference. I thank everybody for participating uh, in this video conference.